What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today we've got some new Logos cars to talk about from Worlds Collide. Logos are always my second favourite house, though, with the Saurian Republic coming along. We do need to, well, I need to have a little bit of a look at that. But in Age of Ascension, they took a bit of a step back. They were disappointing. If the cards we've been shown are anything to go on, Logos is about to get well good again. And we need to start with the frankly ridiculous Eddie. Or E-D-A-I quote Eddie end quote 4x4. I'm just calling it Eddie. Eddie is a ridiculous card. Now, it is a creature, but honestly... It's going to end up looking a lot more like an action. You're going to play it to get benefit this turn, and it is not going to stay on the field. Technically a creature, but both yourself and your opponent will basically be treating it like an action. Because when you play, you get to archive a card and archive, and a card is good. Oh, it's got free power and no armor. Archive and a card is good. It means that you can stash a card for later. Now, I did a video all about archive, and I'll pop a link in the description, but general rule is you either stash one or two cards for the perfect time, so you stash a too much to protect for when your opponent's about to forge a key, or you build up an archive of one particular house. You got four or five Logos cards in your archive, and then you go nuts having a Logos turn. But then when it's out, your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each card in your archives. This could get ridiculous. Logo's cards are good at archiving. It's their thing. It's, it really is their special skill more so than any other house, more so than any other skill they've got. And you can build up six, seven, eight cards in your archive, and your opponent's keys cost six, seven, eight more amber. And the terrifying thing for your opponent, they cannot get rid of your archives. Now, technically, that's not actually true. There is one thing they can do, and it is actually another Logos card. It's Dysania. For Power Creature, when you play it, your opponent discards each of their archived cards. You gain one amber for each card discarded this way. Now, if I've missed one, do let me know, but essentially, th this is your option. Yeah, that's, um, that, that's pretty rough, ladies and gentlemen. If your opponent's got Dysania, that is about the best counter for Eddie you are ever going to have, because frankly... You try and archive six, seven cards, and your opponent's like, I'm going to discard your archive. Now my keys don't cost any more to forge. Oh, yeah, and I'm gaining six, seven, eight amber. Outside of that, they've got to get rid of Eddie. But here's the thing. That doesn't help them now. That helps them in the future. You play an Eddie, and this is a permanent skill. This skill is working right now. Now, your opponent can destroy Eddie on their next turn, after they've not forged a key because they couldn't afford it because of Eddie. And then maybe you can get Eddie back. Maybe you've got something like an Exhume to recover your Eddie and just play it straight back down again. Maybe you've got multiple Eddie in your deck. In which case, this is a real strong argument for not playing all of your creatures, saving them. And in fact, archiving Eddie is a great thing to do. Of course, when you pick up your archive, it's all or nothing. So if you pick up your archive to get Eddie, you're also emptying your archive, which kind of defeats the object of having Eddie. Never mind. The point is, this is one of the best stopping your opponent forging cards we've seen. And there's a bunch out there. So, Proclamation 346E is a great one for Sanctum, whereby your opponent's keys cost plus two if they don't have creatures from all three of their houses. Similarly... Back in wave one, we had Grammar Jammer that increased it by one, and Mamook that increased it by one, Jammer Pack that increased it by two, Lash of Broken Dreams that increases it by three, but it's an action you've got to use on a disc term. But this can increase it by 12. It's unlikely to do it often, but it can. And all your opponent can do is take out Eddie, and they will, but they can only take down Eddie after having not forged a key this turn. And that ain't as good. And then you can just play Eddie anyway. Seriously, I am beyond in love with this card. It is phenomenal. 
But maybe you want to draw some cards. Well, we've got a couple of options, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start off having a little bit of a look at the upgrade academy training now given that most upgrades have amber bonuses and this doesn't we can presume it's probably going to be a fairly good card and it is it is an upgrade and it reads if you control this creature it belongs to the house logos instead of its original house and it gains reap draw a card it basically turns any creature into Doc Buckton, who draws a card when you reap. Indeed, if you put it on Doc Buckton, then you get to draw two cards when you reap. Drawing cards is good. Keyforge is not a card of amazing draw, nor does it need to be, given the rule that at the end of your turn you draw until you've got six cards in your hand. But make no mistake about it, Academy Training is great. And it means that you get to draw a card when you reap. Not only that, but I mean, the thing that really springs to mind here for me is Professor Sutterkin, which lets you draw a card for each friendly creature. But only if they're logos. Well, this will give you an extra friendly logos creature, meaning you draw one more with Professor Sutterkin when you reap. It's fun. But probably better than that is Daughter. I have a daughter, she's lovely, but she's one. She's more work than really helping out. She rarely gives me cards. That's a lie, she gives me a card every Father's Day, my birthday, Christmas. She's a nice baby like that, though I do think she's getting some help from somewhere. The point is, this daughter will give you extra cards, and it might sound a lot like the card Mother, and it is. I mean, thematically, this is beautiful. Mother... At the end of your turn, you refill your hand to plus one card. Daughter, at the end of your turn, you refill your hand to one additional card. The difference is that mother is a five power, daughter is a two power, but daughter has elusive. So in terms of fighting, it's harder to get rid of daughter because you've got to fight it once to break the elusive, then fight it again to destroy it. Whereas mother, you can just fight it. But... Daughter's only got two power, so it's far easier to just take out Daughter by just playing some of these cards that do cheeky damage, which is very sad. Something like an Ammonia Cloud, for instance, will destroy Daughter, but will not get Mother. Either way, this is extra draw power, and I just mentioned how good extra draw power is. I love that Daughter does a very similar thing to Mother. I love that Daughter is a little bit weaker, but more elusive, as children are. I can catch my wife a lot more easily than I can catch my daughter, but she's a lot smaller. She's also weirdly inhumanly fast, and that surprises me and confuses me a bit. Daughter, point is, daughter, good card. But if you're bored of drawing cards, might I introduce you to Sanitation Engineer, who makes you discard cards. It is a four-power creature with no armor, but it does have Hazardous 1. Now, it's obviously... Not possible to be any less hazardous without being not hazardous at all. But it means that when you are attacked, before the attack goes through, before the attack even happens, one damage is dealt to the attacking creature. And incidentally, if that destroys the attacking creature, there is no attack because the creature isn't there because it is before the attack. So this is kind of cool. It's always nice to have hazardous one. It's not the biggest bonus ever, but it's quite nice. But when you reap, you discard a card from your hand. I absolutely adore Sanitation Engineer. Now look, the bad news is there are going to be turns where you do not want to discard a card from your hand. It's sad. I'm going to be honest with you. There are times you're not going to want to. But there are going to be plenty of times you do. I already told you, right? At the end of your turn in Keyford, you draw until you've got six cards in your hand. So this means that you essentially draw an extra card. You're discarding a card you don't want, and then you get to draw an extra card that you might want. No, it's not the same as mother or indeed daughter. It doesn't give you an extra card per se. It lets you swap a card in your hand you don't want for one at the end of the turn that you do want. And that's the key point here. Yes, it is discarding a card, but... Please remember the fact that you draw a card 
more because you've discarded a card here. I mean, look, Yurk discards a card from its hand, and that sees a bit of play. Although the older you get, like, Yurk, good, you're just discarding one card. Old Yurk discarding two is getting a bit awkward. Ancient Yurk discarding three is kind of annoying. I have a deck with all three of them in, and, um... Uh, let's say varying success. Now that deck also has Exhume, which is another reason you would definitely want to discard a creature. So let's say you've got Exhume in hand, or you, it's in your deck and you're digging for it. You might discard a creature that isn't Dis, and then hopefully you draw into Exhume, and then you can play that creature on your Dis turn using Exhume. There are weird little combos like this that work beautifully just by discarding most of the time i think this is better just because you're drawing an extra card at the end of your turn getting rid of one you don't want but there are some other funky combos as well yes i know you can discard cards from your hand during your turn but only from your active house this lets you discard one that isn't of your active house and if you're just really digging to find one particular card this will make it more likely that you get it but maybe instead you want to do a little bit of damage. How about Thorium Plasmate? It is an action. It gives you an amber bonus. It looks weirdly like the portal gun. And it reads, move an enemy creature anywhere in its controller's battle line. Deal two damage to that creature for each of its neighbors that shares a house with it. Cool. So, as long as you can find a couple creatures of the same house lined up, this will do four damage. Doing four damage is really, really nice. Because it will KO a lot of things. Incidentally, this will get daughter, won't get mother, like I was saying earlier. But there's like a million different things that really rely on being or not being on a flank. So, something like Titan Mechanic, for instance, reduces the cost of forging keys by one. If it's on a flank, if your opponent's got five amber and their Titan Mechanic is on a flank, you can use this to move Titan Mechanic away from the flank. Incidentally, it's a six power creature, so it won't be destroyed unless it's already got two damage on it, but it will get it away from the flank. Or maybe your opponent's taken advantage of something like Camouflage from Age of Ascension. Camouflage is a card that reads creatures not on a flank cannot fight this creature so if you've got a creature you really don't want to fight your creature that has camouflage you move that creature off of a flank boom now they can't touch you i like this it's very situational you're not always even going to do the four damage there are going to be times this is amazing times where it does four damage times where it does two damage and times where you don't do anything and it's just a bit annoying but it does have an amber bonus which means it's never complete garbage and finally one of the weirder more intricate cards we've seen so far mini group think tank free power two armor that is yeah we don't usually see two armor we certainly don't usually see it on a free power creature so just the power armor combination is strange to me but it reads, when you play or fight or reap, deal 8 damage to a creature that shares a house with two of its neighbours. So just like we just saw with Thorium Plasmate, once again, we are relying on trying to have a creature with two neighbours that shares its house. I.e. you're trying to line up three creatures of the same house. Now, it's not always going to be easy and it's not always going to happen. And this actually does nothing unless you can find free lined up, which is sad. But it deals eight damage. Eight is huge. There are very, very few creatures that have more than eight power. You know, you'll find the odd thing like Lollop the Titanic or Khalifi Dragon that can survive. But the vast, vast majority of creatures cannot this is huge. In terms of cheeky damage, I mean, put it this way, right? Life for a life only does six cheeky damage, and you've got to sacrifice one of your creatures to pull it off. This can do eight every turn. Although, ironically, the more creatures you destroy using this, the less likely it is that you'll find three all lined up ready to hit. Yes, it's awkward. No, it's not going to work all that often. But when it does, eight damage is huge. And it's when you play or when you fight or when you reap 
So you'll probably get a few chances. And don't underestimate the two armor. That two armor will keep it around for a little while. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of really genuinely exciting logos cars to have a look at today. I mean, none of them are going to be more exciting than Eddie. It is one of the best You Shall Not Forge cards we've got. But make no mistake about it. A lot of these cars are very nice indeed, and I love that we've got Mother. I'm sorry, it just makes me super happy. But I'd like to know what you think about all of these new cards, so please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games like Keyforge and anything else that takes my fancy. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.